Now that we've gone into quite a lot of detail and some quite complex SQL, it's time to go back to the drawing board and take a look at some good practices so that we can make effective use of the techniques that we've learnt. To begin with, we're going to look at the use of SQL batch files. Then we're going to look at some basic principles of database design, including data modelling and normalisation. Then we're going to look at ways in which we can optimise our existing databases. First of all, prioritising which kind of optimization is the most important. Then ways to analyse the performance of our SQL queries. Use of indexes. And finally, denormalisation. And some other optimizations as well that we don't have room to put here. All of that will come later in this chapter. But for now, let's take a look at our text editor. Now, up till now, we've been purely using the MySQL monitor to enter our SQL statements. There is another way of achieving exactly the same result, or there are many ways, I should say, including the graphical user interfaces and web administration that we looked at in the very first chapter of this title. But this way is a way in which we can not only execute the commands through the MySQL monitor, we can also keep a record of the creation of our database, for instance, or any queries that we wish to run on it. This particular text file is uh, a text file containing a series of SQL statements to build a database. It creates a database and then creates all the tables and the structures that are required for the data. This is known as an SQL schema. The reason why it's a good idea to use the text editor to generate the SQL that you want to build your database is that then you have a permanent record of the way in which you built your database to begin with. You're also able to put comments in your code. If you take a look up here at the green letters here, you'll see that they're surrounded by a forward slash and an asterisk, and then an asterisk and then a forward slash. That allows you to add comments of whatever you like to explain the way in which your SQL schema is working. And that allows you to document within your code your thinking, thinking rather, behind the creation of the tables in your SQL schema. There's another style of comment just below, which is good for when you only want to put in one line comments. And you just put a little hash symbol at the beginning of the line, and then MySQL will ignore all the characters that follow it until it hits a new line character. Effectively, a way of adding whatever human readable comment you want to put within your SQL schema. You may notice that all the MySQL keywords and SQL statements are colored a different color to the rest of the text. There's also the comment in green at the top, and the brackets are in red. Now, I haven't gone through my text file and colored in all the different parts of my text. I'm simply using a syntax file within this text editor, which picks up on MySQL syntax and highlights it in different colors. This just keeps things easier to read. I find this very useful. I could thoroughly recommend TextPad as a text editor, useful for not only MySQL, but many other kinds of programming. Let's take a look at the way we use one of these SQL text files with MySQL. If we go over here to our DOS prompt, then you'll notice that we're not using the 
MySQL monitor this time, we're simply using the system prompt. Because I'm running Microsoft Windows, this is a DOS prompt, depending on the operating your system is running, you may see another kind of prompt here. If we take a look at the number of SQL files in the binary folder of the MySQL folder, we'll see that there are quite a few. This is because I frequently use SQL files to create databases and to run queries rather than typing them all in ad hoc, line by line, into the MySQL monitor. Let's take a look at how we use, for instance, the library.sql file that we were just looking at in the text editor. We simply type in the name of the MySQL client, which is MySQL. We use a lesser than sign. And then we type in the name of the text file, in this case, library.sql. The, command, the commands within the library.sql file have been carried out. If we enter the client and ask it to show us a list of the databases, as you can see, that library database has been added. And within the library database, all the tables that we described in our SQL schema, library.sql, have been created. We were also able to populate some of the tables with a little bit of data that we included within our SQL file as well. The way we did that, I'll just pop back to the text editor to show you, is create table statements are exactly as you would write them straight into the MySQL monitor. And when we want to add any data, we simply use insert statements. So it's as simple as that. Exactly the same way as we use the MySQL monitor, we create our text files. Let's go back to the command prompt here. And we're going to exit the MySQL monitor. Now, you may have created a database. This scenario is quite likely to have happened. You may have created a database that you're quite happy with. You don't want to go back and write a text file guessing exactly how you created the database in order to have a permanent record of it. On the other hand, the database is already created. So what are you to do? Well, help is at hand in the form of a very useful utility included with MySQL called MySQL Dump. To use it from the command line, that is your operating system command line, not the MySQL monitor. Simply type in the name of the utility, which is MySQL dump, followed by the particular database you want to grab the data for, so sample, and if you wish, you can include the particular name of the table. Let's take our orders table from the sample database. Then you use a greater than sign. And then finally, you put the name of the SQL file you wish to output to. This SQL file will be created automatically by MySQL dump. We just have to give it a name here. So let's call it orders SQL. That way we'll know what's in the SQL file. The text file has now been created. I'm going to use the DOS type command to take a look at it. As you can see, MySQL has generated a create table statement which specifies exactly what the structure of the table should be. There's also a series of comments at the top marked off by hash signs. And that lets us know that it was MySQL that made the dump, that the host, where it came from, the version of MySQL, and so on. It also clearly marks what it's doing before it does each thing. So 
table structure for table orders will be the table definition. Dumping data for table orders will be the data that it's extracted from the orders table. In this case, a certain set of orders here. So if you've already created your database, all is not lost. You can simply use the MySQL dump utility to pull the structure and data out of your database and include it within a text file. Then you can go back and document it, tweak it in whatever way you want, and recreate your database at a later date. In our next movie, we're going to look at the process by which you take a database from the drawing board to reality.